right everyone this is a bit different we are not in a tractor we're on a sofa <laughs> we have been following um andrew evans move so far heading towards canada and uh you will know we have seen a, a little vlog and, and the cows been moved and, the, and there was the, the machinery sale as well and uh, we've caught up with andrew here now and uh we're we're not actually in andrew's house at the minute his house is next door but all the stuff has been took and uh, put in the container yesterday and is currently making its way over towards canada so uh and what notion did you take of relocating up on sticks selling and then going to canada <laughs> I suppose Canada, uh, I worked on a farm in Canada when I was at school and fell in love with Canada then oh. and it was always a, on my to-do list. So you, you've physically been on the ground, for want of a better word, working and it was on, on a farm? Yeah. In my little bit of experience, you were always focused heavily in the dairy, but the farm has deeper roots in that. How long has the farm here been in the Evans name or who started it? Well, my, my grandfather moved here in roughly 1946 and brought my father and his siblings up on, on this farm and watched my father, he took the farm on and then I followed suit with my father. Mm -hmm. You'd grown the farm and you'd your own new parlour in and what type of dairy farming would you say would you have been intensive or what type of herd would you have been working with? Well, because of the limitation of ground here, try to breed higher yielding cows and mm -hmm. try to utilize the ground as much as I, as I could and push them on more intensively. But um, my father, he had 60 cows and I took over, them over and started increasing, renting more ground and pushed them up to 200 cows. And they went from maybe 5,000 litres up to 8,500. Yeah. I was always trying to push further and push further and my goal was 9,000. I never met it, but I was pushing for it. Is it fair to say that you, did, do you think you took it as far as you could take it within within the certain bounds of, I'll say, farm, land, accessibility? Do you think you could have grown it much further? It certainly was getting harder. And I suppose with the fourth generation coming up now and been interested in farmer, it was going to be harder for him than it was for for me you know you've it's not just a case of going you know what see you later jump on a plane and we'll go and do it in Canada so when you know is there is there like a moment you know was there a flash of light you know as they talk about or did you just decide I'm going to do this well do you know what since we got married in 2000 the children come along uh, I always said to my wife you know if children grow up and uh, if they want to farm it's not going to be in this country with the, all the hurdles we had but it come to a pinnacle if that's the right word to use last year after the bad milk prices for two years there and bad weather for two years and i said once the milk price rises that'll be the time to sell that's that's my chance it's now or never there's no point in trying to sell your farm whenever prices is on the rocks and to put it into perspective dairy farm particularly in northern ireland has come through an extremely difficult two years not only has it been difficult prices and things like that there it's been absolutely horrific weather i know as we sit here we're coming off the back of uh, one of the best spells of weather we've had in a long time but that was horrendous last year and, and, and I can tell you what, I think if any, any, I think almost any dairy farmer in Northern Ireland, if you'd asked them at one point last year if they had the choice to go, would they go? I think the most of them would have said aye. When the milk price came round again, basically what you're saying, you decided we're going to go for that. So that was really when, when did that initial go to the market come into play? Well, I could see it happening last August. I started talking about it and then come September, October the prices started it was kept rising and I thought right I have to go now so I, I took my two sons and went out to Canada and visited and started traveling around a few farms to to see where we'd go. And how was their reaction? They liked it yeah they liked the, the big machinery we stopped at a, a John Deere dealer and yeah they fell in love with the 600 horsepower tractors. 
articulated. John Deere, you see that? Just put that in there. That's a fibre you owe me, John Deere. No, I'm like, so when did you put the farm in the market and when did you decide that's it? We're going for it. Well, after my visit in November, come home in November time, I went straight away and visited my local auctioneer, talked about putting the farm in the market and selling the cows. So the farm, just with checks and paperwork and that, it didn't go on the market right away, but certainly in the, in the new year, January time, we put it in the market. How did that go? Was there big interest straight away, slow? At the start, there wasn't big interest. So step one was the farm. Yeah. You were just gauging the interest. Yeah. And once you felt there was an in, enough of interest there that you felt you could go ahead with the cows, is that yeah, roughly? Yeah, so the cows much. were sold when? The cows went up for auction beginning of April. And then after that, there was the machinery. I couldn't sell the machinery before I sold the cows because I needed and describe that for me because here's this third generation farmer on, on his home farm where he's been all his life. And here you are, lorries reversed in one misty morning. Because oh, remember we were here and watching him go onto that trailer and down the road. How did that feel? Was that tough? That was real tough. Um, especially whenever the lorries moved off with what you've worked with for so many years and what you've tried to breed up. Yeah, it, it, it was difficult. Then I suppose you've no time for emotion at that point because you've down the road and you've a sale on. How did you feel the sale went? You were happy. You had a good sale on your cows, I believe. Yeah, but um, you couldn't have told me that before uh, before the sale. Uh, you, you're, you always tend to think the worst, but yeah, I did have a good sale. And was, is that describe sitting in the in, in the box in the in the mart as they're going through you know because you did you, you you look you know you did look nervous at the start i remember saying to myself oh i oh i don't know how i would cope under that pressure that's a big thing like you're not taking two or three cows to the market and if you don't sell you can bring them home i hadn't got that option i them cows they were there for sale the cows are now gone so there's there's no bagging out. <laughs> you you know what I mean. That that was the one. It was that not the one moment in it all where it it turned it from somewhat, you know, this pie in the sky idea. We want to go to Canada. We've seen a farm. We do this. We're going to try and sell the farm. We know there's a couple of boys here and there. We're interested. We think we could sell the farm. Bang, cows gone. Mm. No turning back now. Uh, it, it it certainly brought reality to it. Whenever the cows were gone. Mm -hmm. Next thing. I suppose in the process was we had the machinery auction, the machinery auction, and you held it on your farm here. Yeah. Now I know we were up at it, and I know I myself want to come up, but I was a wee bit late at getting up, and I was like, "Whoa!" And the yard was bunged with people, and it, and it just was nearly overwhelming when you seen the amount of people there. But you had a good auction there as well. Yeah. Well, it's been a long time since there was a farm sale. I think this was a special one because it was on a farm, and Aye, and, yeah, and yeah. buyers knew they weren't going to buy rubbish. They were buying working machinery. And at the end of the day, I was still here. You'd had a good sale. You had a very successful sale. Like most of your stuff went. Mm. Nearly all of your stuff managed Nearly to go all that day. Yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden, now you've no cows. Now you've no machines. And no job, no work. Aye. I think of the money you made of the cows. <laughs> but that, that didn't stop me from waking them up at a half four. Was that your time of normal, your normal routines a half four? Yeah. Well, oh, certainly. Mm. There must be an awful lot going on in Andrew's head at this point in time. You know, that night of the machinery auction, you must be sitting thinking, this is happening, this is really, really happening to me. Yeah, but my focus then was getting back out to Canada and looking around a few more farms and there's a few more farms come on the market for sale. Did it come to any fruition? No. No, no I just... Another holiday? Different. Yeah. Well, no, it wasn't a holiday. It's, my wife keeps saying it was a holiday, but it wasn't a holiday. I'm that was, with, that was tough work. I'm with your wife. No, that was tough work. <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, you should have took me. <laughs> then it would have been the best working holiday ever. <laughs> so that that trip, did you come home disappointed and you know just Yeah, a little. But you're always learning something and meeting people and Okay. You're putting out all them different lines and different directions and But at this stage you're still are you are you worried about the farm or 
you know, do you know what I mean? Are you worried about getting it finally finalised and done and dusted? Or, or are you over there now going to your equivalent estate agents or auctioneers or whatever over there? You're over there going, look, I'm almost there. I have X amount of money. I have this. This is what we need to do. I, 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 I'm just trying to get my head around where you're at in your head, if you know what I mean. I talk to a lot of estate agents out there, guys that have, have had my number from years past when I've made inquiries, but um, they had nothing for me. And there wasn't a lot coming on the market for sale. So where are we now then? Well, I come home from that and 22nd of May, I went back out again. I heard of a f couple of farms that weren't on the market for sale yet. So I thought I'll go out and see them and see if I can buy them before they go on the market. <laughs> So you're out on the 22nd of May for another working holiday? Yeah. 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 One farm was over 3,000 acres, but a lot of it was grazing land, and I thought, nah, I could spend the rest of my life working in there. Needed a lot of work, but... So I shied back from that one. I didn't go and visit the farm I bought. I actually visited it the second time I was out, but there was no point. I knew if I was going to buy that farm, I was going to have to increase my offer. Some more for it. Yeah, so basically there's a farm there's a farm out there that you had seen one time before and you had had you put an offer you had obviously I, I, I did in. put an offer on it before Christmas but it wasn't accepted. Wasn't accepted. So yeah yeah, so for the for that particular farm you knew you were gonna to have to increase the offer. But obviously did you increase the offer? Not right away. I Not wanted to see what else I could compared to. I needed more farms just to compare to. The bottom line in this, at the end of the day, you've, that's the farm you've bought. Yeah. That that one that you did see in the second visit. And the first visit. In the first visit, sorry. And you've bought that. Basically, as we stand now, you have the farm bought. Mm-hmm. <sighs> that was tough. You got everything here finalised and settled up. Everything sold, done and dusted. Beginning of May or very, very early May, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. So it all really came in fast at the finish up, all the thinking, all the planning. So from the farm going on the market at the beginning of the year, for the cows being sold then at the beginning of April to the machinery auction then in April as well, we only rolled into the first few days in May and you got the, the finalising in the farm. So from the point of view, job done. <laughs> for, 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 for here... And then given and Northern Ireland, the job's done. So, so you said that you were in Canada when the farm actually was done and dusted here. Yeah. So was that not like a how? You're in Canada. I presume it's a phone call. Yeah. How did that feel? I was nervous that um, I wasn't going to get as much as I would like for the farm. The farm was sold in six lots. I may add. Ah, uh, yes, yes. And some yes. lots sold earlier and I was pleased with it. And, but I was trying to get the the final bit sold. And all the time I was doing sums to see how much I'm worth. And could I go for a bigger farm or, or could I increase my offer? <laughs> yeah, we all, yeah, yeah. So you've been pulled onto this farm a couple of times yeah. now. So there's something about it that you like. Yeah, for sure. And then my third visit... I met the man that owned it. I knew there was only one way I was going to buy that farm, and that was to increase my offer. And that bit doesn't really matter. You know, that's your business, but you've sat down, you've had a cup of tea, for want of a bit, or tea, as we say. You've had a cup of tea, and you bought the farm. Mm -hmm. And you had the confidence to do that because everything was done and dusted here. Yeah. How did you feel that night? Whew. <laughs> yeah? Pretty much. But like, did it? But like, did you get that real intense feeling, you know, in the bottom of the pit of your stomach? You're almost like, not what have I done, but like, whoa, this is going to happen now. Yeah. Well, now I just can't wait just to get out there and start farming that farm. Of course. I mean, you, you know, it's probably been quiet and quite eerie around here for the last couple of months since all that. But from you put the hand to the plough, as we say, boom, 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 boom. It's all sat up beautifully for you and it's worked out a treat. Yesterday, which was, um, I suppose we'll say the beginning of June, your own house, everything was moved out. Maybe that didn't annoy you too much, but I'm going to ask, how how did uh, your wife deal with that one? Because watching all, everything, getting 
poured it into a container. Was that a difficult one? Well, that was that was difficult. Or a hopeful all, one. All your worldly possessions, what I was left with, was just all boxed up and put in a container. And that that was hard for me, but I'm sure it was harder for my wife because mm -hmm. it was her bought most of that stuff. When everything was moving out and I suppose getting into the container and being being shipped off, that's a very definite this is happening whenever you're not able to look in and see the table that you've had your breakfast round for the last number of years of your life or whenever the, the kids come, come home that evening and the, the Xbox or whatever the, <laughs> isn't there. It is, it is strange and even going into the house now there, there's an echo in the house because it's, it's empty, they're just four walls. And so when's the move? Hopefully going out next week. Nothing. You or everyone? Just myself. Just yourself. An all working holiday. Okay. And then when's the plan for everyone to come and join or hopefully when they finish school, end of June. Right, I'm with you. So this is this is this is all this is all coming around the corner, like, you know, within I'll just say Two here weeks. and out we're yeah, we're we're at the beginning of it. We're at the beginning of June really, within within the next month, chances are everyone's gonna possibly be in Manitoba, yep. in Canada. Mm -hmm. The farm itself, what can you tell us? You know, what 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 can you tell us about it? Is it the same direction? Is it is it dairy, beef, sheep? Do they have sheep in Canada? Well, <laughs> no. But what is the plan? Is there a plan? Yeah, well, the farm was and still is. It's uh, crops and what they call cow calf pears. We call them suckers. Suckers, yeah. Yeah, and most farm have that, and they. They're more self-sufficient, where they grow their crops and feed their own crops to their own cattle. Mm -hmm. Is it a big farm, small farm, and can, even in Canada standards, I, I, I have no idea. Like, what is a standard farm in Canada? I mean, I... Well, I'm not sure what the average size of farm in Canada is, but it's as big in comparison to what we have here. I'm looking at about uh, 2,200 acres. We better jump up. Slightly. And are you planning to hit the horrible world then with it? No. And yes. I'll grow my own crops. But I always was an animal lover. From the point of view of um, going out and getting started, I presume house and everything sorted, you know where you are going and then straight into doing a bit of farming then? Pretty much. Somehow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the farm that you've bought... Is, is there a story behind it? You know, are you are you going straight in? Are you taking over a going concern, or are you, or have you just starting stock now and look at tractors and bring in machines and do that? Or what way does that no. that work? Well, uh, the gentleman is selling it, and um, he's he's looking to retire, pull back, and it's 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 a running farm at the minute, and I'll just move on, and he'll help me make that transaction and that takeover and show <laughs> me few things and then eventually he'll move off and I'll just take full control of it. So really, really and truly, you're going out to a farm that's there, it's up, it's running, it's currently making money for want of a better word, and then you're taking over, so what tractors does he run? What colour are they? Uh, well, you'll like this, they're all green <sighs> with a yellow stripe down. Good move. But Good but, move, Andrew. But, but, you don't need to worry about anything else. It'll but all work. The, the main tractor is actually blue. The main tractor? Yeah. She's What's that? articulated Ford. A Ford or a New Holland? Ford. A proper old school yoke? Yeah. Articulated. No way. Yeah. And that's in the deal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything, everything from the tractors to the Tillage, machinery, right down, cattle, cabin jack, electric fences, everything. Obviously, we know there's a great uh, desire to go to Canada. It's, obviously, that seed was sown away back in the, the <coughs> 80s, as you said. It must be 40 years ago now, yeah. that for you. But <laughs> <laughs> what, school, what school did you go to? I went. <laughs> but but um, I take it. Your whole family's been behind you through all of this. Yeah, yeah, supported me. And is everybody k 
keen to go or is there a little bit yes of... well um i feel that when i suggested this and yeah it was good and it was a great idea even when i visited canada it was a good idea but as we're getting closer you have to think you have to seriously think i'm a am i doing the right thing here but my kids as well it's hard for them too that's it. of course it is do you think is the, is the next generation definitely interested in the farming or yes i have three sons now and all three are interested in farming well they farm or not but if they if all three did want to farm here in northern ireland there wouldn't be a chance my, my farm's too small here but i could move to canada and, and there is there's more opportunities for them there i mean there's there's no doubt about that and uh, it's a substantial farm that that you have bought you know certainly acreage wise so you know there should be there's plenty of work to keep you all going when it comes to certain times of the year when it comes to the garble and all or you know some of that type of thing so and there should be good you know a good opportunity for the, both the family to do a lot of a lot of that work together you know people often say the grass is always greener far away but have you, or have you been out enough now to satisfy yourself that that's not true in this case? I just have to be careful I don't go out and do my things the way I would do them here. Because that, that's not, it's really not going to work out there. They're farming the way they farm because it works. Yes. I can't bring out my big ideas and say, look, this is the way we're going to do it. So what you're really saying is you're prepared, you're prepared in your head to go out and actually listen. And, and try and watch and, and obviously get a little bit of advice from the farmer that's selling and one thing and another and, and do that there and you're going to have to encourage your children to do the same thing as well as there mm -hmm. yeah yeah and get jobs with local farmers just to see the way they do it and well like I suppose at this point we don't have a lot more to say it's fantastic to be able to sit down and just have an open conversation like this we're not going to you know, we're not going to turn around and say, yep, Andrew's made the right choice. He's not even going to say he's made the right choice. The only way we will be able to know is actually when the move is made and he is there, is at some point if we can catch up with him and see how it's going. You know, when we put up that first uh, little bit of a vlog of the cows going, the, the messages that come in, the overwhelming support and people saying, I don't blame you. We don't blame you for going, we understand. We know the, the, the paperwork here, the bureaucracy involved in farming here and all, but that's not for us what this is about. This is about a young man who had a dream of big things, some were different. You're gonna go and have a go in Canada. Um, we hope it works out for you. We hope we're sitting out there some night with a barbie lit, having a, having a wee steak and uh, your love and life and the things going well, and that's what we would like to do. And, Congratulations on getting this far. This has been a love, but um, you'll uh, hopefully fly. I hope. I want to drive the Ford, by the way. I want to drive this Ford. 